All right, 99.5 KKLA FM Los Angeles, the intersection of faith and reason here at the Frank Pass Story Show, where we're talking with Drs. Hugh Ross and Jason Lyle. Hugh Ross is founder and president of Reasons to Believe, their website, reasons.org. Jason Lyle is with uh, Answers in Genesis, their website, answersingenesis.org. We're debating the age of the earth, the cosmos, the flood, and all those kinds of things. And folks, look, in an hour, there's no way you can cover everything, which is why both gentlemen have been very gracious with their time this afternoon. And at both websites are a bunch of resources so that you can get more informed and test all things and hold fast to that which is good. And in fact, at both sites, there's links to some video debates that they have had in the past where you can get as informed as you possibly can and then hopefully dive back into the text to find out what the the Bible actually teaches on all of these issues. And uh, Dr. Hugh Ross, it's your turn. Let me ask you, what do you think is at stake in this whole debate, why should Christians care about the age of the we're Earth and uh, cosmology? Well, traditionally, the church has always split over the non-essentials of the faith. I mean, the first century, the people were saying you had to be circumcised, and uh, this, again, I would argue, is a non-essential. It's got nothing to do with salvation theology uh, or biblical inerrancy. It is an important issue for the same reason that circumcision was in the first century. Uh, namely, uh, a barrier to, sell, uh, to to evangelism. I mean, for example, uh, you know, just a little while ago, a group of evangelical Christian astronomers came up with a statement where they evaluated a debate on television between me and the young Earth astronomer Danny Faulkner, and they pointed out that the weight of evidence overwhelmingly supports a universe that is billions of years old, referring to the scientific evidence. That's general knowledge. And so when you tell people they have to believe in a universe that's billions of years old and they're trained in engineering and uh, science and realize that that has no credibility, then they say, if I have to believe that, then I'm not going to look at the Bible. You meant thousands so of years old. What it does old. is it stops people from... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you, you meant thousands of... I think you misspoke. You said billions of years. You meant thousands of years. I meant thousands, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All right, so... So, so it can be a barrier to people even picking up the Bible and checking out the, the message of salvation that's there. All right, so Jason, uh, I want your response on this because it's obvious that the entire discipline of astronomy is built upon billions of years, not young, yet you've got a Ph.D. from the University of Colorado. Did they know you were... Quote, a young earther as you were doing your Ph.D.? Some of them did and some of them didn't. I didn't uh, go around advertising it because we've known people that have been uh, uh, released from the university for, for holding to that position. Um, what's at stake? By the way, nothing in astronomy depends on billions of years. Absolutely nothing in terms of operational science that we can do in the present. Mm. It's only uh, notions about the past and how the universe came to be that would uh, be influenced by the billions of years versus uh, thousands of years. Okay. What's at stake? Yeah. Uh, biblical inerrancy, I think, is at stake. Now, I, I know Hugh would say he believes in biblical inerrancy, and so do I, but I think that really is the issue, because if the Bible is so plastic that when it says God created in six days, it really means God exploded the universe into existence over billions of years, I mean, if it's that plastic, then really I think it can mean anything. And I, I do take issue with uh, Hugh's statement that it has nothing to do with salvation. I would say it's not a salvation issue in the sense it's not required for salvation, but it is relevant. Because the Bible makes it very clear that it's because of Adam's sin that death entered the world, and the reason we have suffering and pain in the world today is because of what Adam did. And that's why Jesus Christ had to die on the cross in order to make atonement for our sin. All right, so Jason, so it, is, in it, your, is, it is relevant. All right, so Jason, in your view, and Hugh, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to this. In your view, there was no death prior to the Garden of Eden at all. That's right. There have been no death of anything the Bible calls a living creature. Okay, so Hugh, obviously, with billions of years in the cosmos, there's all kinds of death in order, you know, before Adam appeared, right? In your view. Right, but, but Paul makes it clear in Romans 5 that when Adam sinned, that brought about human death, not the death of all life. Mm. Uh, Romans 5.12, death through sin was visited upon all men. Only one species can experience sin, the human species, and notice that Paul says uh, death came to all men, not to all life. Mm. And so uh, Adam's offense brought about the death of the human species, both spiritual death and physical death. Uh, but that's not a reference to the fact that, that there was no death of plants and animals before. Clearly there was. Maybe go back to the uh, Garden of Eden. Uh, you got Adam and Eve eating before they sinned. The very process of eating mandates the death of plants or plant parts. 
Jason, let me ask you, and guys, I know you both have a ton of resources on all of this stuff, and time is fleeting, but we've got to talk about dinosaurs in the flood. Jason, give me your view on when were dinosaurs here, were they on the ark, and was the flood global or local? Okay, well, let me answer that. If I could just real quick, I do have to um, answer Hugh Ross's claim very, very quickly at least. If I would say if we only had Romans 5.12, I might agree. But we also have Romans 8, which makes it clear that the, that the curse fell upon all creation. We also have Genesis 1.31 that indicates that God saw everything he'd made, and behold, it was very good, which means you're not going to have death and suffering, even of animals, because God cares for animals, too. And plants are not classified as living creatures, according to the Scripture. So you can talk about plant death in the same way you can talk about a dead battery, but that doesn't mean it was ever alive in a biblical sense. Now, with regard to dinosaurs, the Bible makes it clear that God created all the land animals on the sixth day, along with human beings, and uh, so um, dinosaurs are land animals, therefore dinosaurs were created on the sixth day. They must have lived at the same time as people. I think uh, we can't dogmatically say from the scriptures that they didn't die out, before, you know, that they, that they survived up into the flood, but I think for, um, because we find, them, we find fossils associated with dinosaurs in what we think are flood layers, I think they did survive up until the flood and were on the ark, because God called, every, God called um, every t- uh, two of every air-breathing land animal to be on board the ark, and so dinosaurs would have been there too not really a problem. People think, well, they're so big. Well, actually, most dinosaurs are pretty small, and even the big ones started out very small, so God right. might have taken young dinosaurs on board the earth. And the flood was global. And the flood was global, okay. right, clearly, because it says all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. All right, so Hugh, uh, dinosaurs flood, uh, what's your view regarding those? Well, I believe the flood is worldwide, but not global. I mean, the Bible frequently makes references to worldwide phenomena that are much less than the globe. As far as the, the flood goes, uh, Psalm 104, uh, a creation psalm, says this, with reference to creation day three. And he set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with a deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took the flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys. And the place you assigned for them, you set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. Mm. That's repeated five other places in the Bible, that once God sets up continental land masses, never again will the water cover the whole face of the earth, which rules out the possibility that the flood is global. Nevertheless, I believe the flood wiped out all of humanity except those on board the ark. So it was universal to all of humanity and all the animals associated with him, but that doesn't mean Antarctica was flooded with water. All right, what about the dinosaurs? Were dinosaurs on the ark in your view, Hugh Ross? Uh, no, I think dinosaurs were created on creation day five, and uh, they were extinct uh, before God created uh, human beings. Uh, I don't think the Bible ever addresses the subject of dinosaurs for the simple reason that we humans didn't even know about them until 200 years ago. The Bible only gives us vocabulary that's common to all generations reading it. You won't find the word Pymasons in the Bible either. Doctors Hugh Ross and Jason Lyle, I want to thank you guys for your, your time this afternoon. I would love to do this again. You're both very gracious with that. And, of course, within uh, the hours, the, the parameters of only one hour, we can't get into all of this in great detail. But, folks, look, those of you listening and even those on the Internet and podcasts and all of that stuff, uh, this is an opportunity for you to hear a couple of the proponents articulate as advocates of their view uh, the best arguments on both sides. My encouragement to you is to test all things and hold fast to that which is good. There's video, there's articles, there's podcasts, there's a whole bunch of resources at both websites. And, uh, and again, I go back to the very first thing I said. Both these guys love the Lord. They both believe in biblical inerrancy. They're both hostile to naturalism and evolution, and yet they differ. And so I guess the, the point is it's okay for Christians to differ on these non-essentials. But again, get back into the text. What does the Bible actually teach on all of these things? And get as much information as you can. And certainly uh, get informed so that you can articulate these issues to those that are skeptics and on the outside they're asking these kinds of questions. Hugh Ross is the founder and president of Reasons to Believe. Their website is reasons.org. Jason Lyle is uh, with Ken Ham's Answers in Genesis. That website, answersingenesis.org. We, uh, again, want to thank both gentlemen, both doctors, for their time here on the Frank Pastore Show. I would love to do it again.